God's unfailing grace and His mercy, His peace are yours through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The sermon text is recorded for us. It's the Old Testament lesson in Genesis chapter 6. It is, the, as the writer says, the account of Noah's family, his generation, Noah. We know him as the man who built the ark, the man who followed God's will and was saved, he and all those animals in that ark. As we take a look at this lesson today and take its truth to heart, we marvel at how God saves his people. Genesis chapter 6, I invite you to follow along. You can follow along on the screen, or if you have a bulletin, you can look on page 8. This is what happened when mankind began to multiply on the face of the earth. When daughters were born to people, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took as wives for themselves any of them they chose. The Lord said, My spirit will not struggle with man forever, because he is only flesh. His days will be 120 years. The Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth and that all the thoughts and plans they formed in their hearts were only evil every day. The Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with sorrow. The Lord said, I will wipe out mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, along with the animals, the creeping things, and the birds of the sky, because I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account about the development of Noah's family. Noah was a righteous man, a man of integrity in that generation. Noah walked with God. Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. In the sight of God, the earth was morally corrupt, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked at the earth and saw that it was corrupt, for all flesh was corrupt in all their ways on the earth. So God said to Noah, I have decreed the end of all flesh, because the earth is filled with violence because of them. Now I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Make an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Seal it inside and outside with pitch. I myself am about to bring a flood of waters on the earth in order to destroy all flesh under the sky that has the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth will die but I will establish my covenant with you. You shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. You shall bring a pair, male and female, of every kind of living flesh into the ark with you to keep them alive. Include the birds according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, every creeping thing on the ground according to their kinds. Two of every sort shall come to you so you can keep them alive. Take with you every type of food that is eaten and store it for yourself so it can be used as food for you and for them. So that is what Noah did. He did everything that God commanded him, just as he had been told. This is God's word. We pray. O Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear members of God's holy church, that great ark in which he saves his people. When is God finally going to do something? I'm sure you've heard that question, probably from this pulpit already, if not in your own discussions with others. When is God finally going to come and do something? Doesn't he see? Doesn't he understand? What a mess! What a disaster this world is. We try. We do what we can. We, we work hard. We dot every I and cross every T. And still, and you can get the whole long laundry list of the things that go wrong, whether it is people getting sick and dying, whether it is the unrest and violence the sadness, the corruption.
I don't really know exactly what it was like in the days of Noah, but I can think I can imagine. And as the world gets older and things get worse and worse, I think we all can start to imagine just how bad it must have been. How bad it must have been in Noah's generation. It's very clear as the Lord describes what he sees through Moses who wrote these words down, just how corrupt the people were. God, the Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth and that all the thoughts and plans they formed in their hearts were only evil every day. And he says later, God looked at the earth and saw that it was corrupt, for all flesh was corrupt in all their ways on earth. The earth was filled with violence. Can you imagine it? A world filled with violence. Imagine wars that aren't just on other continents, or one, or two, or three, but every continent. Imagine the ravages of violence that don't just fill the streets in some cities, in faraway cities, but in every city. Every plan of their hearts was only evil every day. Can you imagine, dear Christian, living in that kind of world as you are right now. Child of God, one who lives for God, one who is determined to follow His will, one who is willing to sacrifice everything, even your own life, for the sake of following that one true God. Imagine how lonely it would be. Noah, He was a righteous man, a man of integrity in that generation. Imagine being like the one and only family among all the world of corrupt violence. What do you think his prayers were? How he must have gotten down on his knees every day and prayed not only for his safety and the safety of his family, but that God would deal with the wickedness around him. And he wasn't praying that they would just be wiped off the face of the earth. I don't think that was in his mind. But that God would do something, that he would come and deal with his wickedness in the way that only God can do. You see, Noah understood from living in the world that he did that God is the God who saves, and that when He comes, He comes to bring salvation to His people. Noah probably knew people like Adam and Eve who were around right at the very beginning. If he himself did not have opportunity to talk to them, it was probably only a, a generation or two separating, and he could hear stories of how when Adam and Eve fell into sin and brought wickedness into the world and there was the first murder and how things just kept getting worse from there, where the children of God even began to give up the one true way of living and walking with God and began to pursue the things of this world, marrying whomever they wanted to marry and falling into sin as they did so or pursuing the pleasures of this world, or letting themselves get filled with violence and corrupted. And as he saw, and he remembered those stories, he remembered what happened when the world first fell into sin. God came walking on the earth, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, just like he had done so many times before with Adam and Eve. And when he came, he came 
with salvation. He came with a precious gift to give. For Adam and Eve who had fallen into sin, they needed to know that the Lord was going to come and He was going to come with salvation. He made a promise to them that there is going to be one to come who will crush the serpent's head and undo all the evil He had done. That was God's plan. Now as the world is full of sinners, as Noah looks out on his generation, he too is struck by the wickedness. And he wants God to come and save his people once again. How it must have been not only lonely for him, but hard for him to walk with God, as it says in our text walking with God, to, to be somebody with whom God would want to come and walk with you, right? The God of love, the God of mercy coming and just like he did with Adam and Eve, walking side by side and you not only walking with him but following his will. It's like Jesus said, come follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. The Lord revealed to Noah that he had a plan. It started in that Garden of Eden, and now it was going to be carried on through him. He says, I am going to wipe out with the waters of a flood all life on the earth, but I am going to make my covenant with you. That promise that I gave before to Adam and Eve and was carried on through their children is now going to be carried on through you and yours because I am going to come and I'm going to save my people again and again. As we see Noah, he begins to build that ark, doesn't he? Just like God described it to him, big box of gopher wood, rooms inside, filling the outside of it and the inside with pitch so that it's watertight and bringing the food in and then waiting for those animals to come in two by two, male and female, so that everything was ready, that God could save his people once again. How Noah, how Noah and his family must have felt so out of place in that world of sin and wickedness. How they must have felt alone. Imagine if you were sitting in church alone, just you, your family, maybe a preacher like me up in front. Be odd, wouldn't it? It'd be really strange. God has a plan, doesn't he? A plan to bring his people one by one, or two by two, or family by family, generation by generation, and to save them, to bring them into his great ark of the church and to rescue them. You see, when God made this plan, there were those who did doubt and wondered, how is he going to do this? Why would he do this? Some people even ask, why would God use a flood? Why would he do these things that he does? Why, doesn't, why didn't he just fix everything at the very beginning? Why didn't he just stop the devil? Why didn't he start over again? Why didn't, why didn't, and why didn't he do this or that? I'm sure if you haven't heard those questions, you've at least thought them or somebody else has said them to you, but you know the answer too. You've heard it, I'm sure. The reason why God didn't do any of that is because of his love. He's not about to start the world over because he knew that you were going to be in the world. He knew that you were going to be born. He knew that you were going to live on this earth, and he didn't want to just stop that and cut that right off. Instead, he wanted to save you. He wanted to rescue you from the world of sin that you would live in. He wanted to rescue you from the flood of corruption and violence that surrounds you. And so he allowed things to move forward with that plan in place. For Adam and Eve, 
He took them out of the Garden of Eden and put that angel to guard the way to the tree of life so that he might give them the opportunity to die in this world of sin and leave it behind and enter him, his glory forever, a true Garden of Eden, a place of eternal life. In Jesus, God does an amazing thing, doesn't he, as he saves his people. The flood of sin that fills the world threatens to overwhelm his people and wash them under. And what does he do in Jesus? He puts us in his arms and in his hands and he lifts us up above that flood. And as he lifts us up above himself, he falls under. He is swept away by the flood of sin and death. He's the one who dies, and we are safe. When Jesus died on the cross, he was lifting us up above sin and death. He was rescuing us and letting it take his own life so that you too, like God's people of every generation, would not be swept away by the sin around them. Our Savior, our God, comes to rescue His people. He comes to do it in a way that only He can, and only He knows how to do it just right. Whether it was with Adam and Eve and walking with them and being their God and telling them about the promised Savior to come, or whether it was with Noah rescuing them in an ark and keeping his covenant promise, or whether it was with the patriarchs or with David, Joseph, and Mary, Jesus came as a little child born in Bethlehem to save his people. And you know, he comes to you today too, again and again, each and every day, as you are able to hear, to read, to listen to that word of God and take it to heart. He comes to you with his spirit and lifts you up above the floodwaters once again and says, look and see the salvation I have prepared for you. He walks with you and bids you to walk with him. Walk with him until that day comes when he will come again, one final time, to bring all of his own out of this world to himself in glory. He will call us from our graves, call us from our walk of life, up to join him in the clouds, to be with him in eternal glory. The day is coming. He will come and save his people. Like Noah, we work. We build the ark of the church. We wait patiently for the time to come when God will finally rescue us, one and all. And we praise him for making his covenant with us. Sinful though we are, yet saved by grace in Jesus. Walk with God, build the ark, wait patiently, your God is coming, amen. Please stand.